A new study titled Stable Population Structure in Europe Since the Iron Age Despite High Mobility Examines DNA Samples from Roman Balkan Antiquity has been uploaded as a preprint. Before we discuss some of the results of the study, we should clarify the different levels of DNA examination. On the internet, especially when genetic similarities between different populations are discussed, you will read theories which either claim that an ethnic group is descended from an ancient population because they are similar genetically, or that they are very different genetically, hence the modern group isn't descended from the ancient population. Such claims are by default inaccurate because there are several different levels of DNA heritage which don't necessarily correlate with each other. There are three commonly used DNA examination tools both in scientific studies and in commercial tests. They are autosomal testing, Y haplogroup testing, and mitochondrial haplogroup testing. Autosomal tests examine the genetic ancestry of a person from all ancestors, both male and female, via the study of genetic information they carry from their recombined chromosomes they inherit from both parents. Autosomal ancestry doesn't extend past 8-9 to nine generations. This means that if a person moves to a radically different area from a genetic ancestry perspective, and all his descendants are born from intermarriage with locals, at most, in 8-9 to nine generations, no detectable traces of his autosomal ancestry will exist in his distant descendants. Thus, two other types of ancestry are preferable for ancient patrilineal or matrilineal ancestry, which extends back thousands of years. Y-DNA testing examines genetic information which can only pass through father to son. Y-chromosome genetic information is not lost intergenerationally, and the calculation of its rate of mutation allows us to see with great accuracy if a male is patrilineally the descendant of individuals who lived thousands of years ago. Because this ability of genetic information transmitted via Y-DNA, its examination helps clarify the actuality of folk traditions of tribes which claim that they come from the same patrilineal ancestor. If their folk traditions refer to a true historical event, then all males descending from that tribe should have the same haplogroup and lineage, clade, within that haplogroup. Mitochondrial DNA testing is the equivalent of Y DNA testing for the examination of X chromosomes which is only passed from mother to daughter, but is carried by both males and females. Both sexes have an X chromosome. The study examined many samples from Western Eurasia and Northern Africa, autosomally, Y DNA, and mtDNA wise. Several samples are still under publication. The six samples we're going to discuss in this series of videos, each one dedicated to one sample, are from the Roman Balkans and they come from males who lived from the 1st to 4th century CE. Let's start with the oldest Balkan sample from the study. The individual sample ID R3745 from Zadar, Northern Dalmatia, died around 22 CE to 121 CE. He hadn't reached adulthood and in his grave, a ceramic bowl, four glass beads, a glass balsamarium, and a bronze chain with a bottle were found. Yadar, as the town was called, had been fully incorporated in the Roman Empire in the late 1st century BCE and was involved in the Great Illyrian Revolt in Dalmatia. The people of Yadar, known as the Yadastini, were an Illyrian people who lived between southern Liburnia and northern Dalmatia. In Daniel Gino's Illyrians, in Ancient Ethnographic Discourse, they are mentioned as follows. Diodorus provides very valuable details of the Greek colonization of the central Adriatic islands Vis, Isa, and Var, Pharos, in the early 4th century BC, corresponding with the expansion of Syracusan ambitions in the Adriatic under Dionysius I. He recorded the Greek conflict at Pharos with the indigenous population from the mainland in 385 to 384 BCE, whom he calls Illyrians. These Illyrians might well be the Yadassini of Liburnian city. Yadar, modern Zadar, mentioned on the inscription found on the island of Far, which celebrates the triumph of the Farians over the Yadassini and their allies. In the 4th century BCE, the Periplos of the pseudo Scylax describes them as one of the Illyrian people who live south of the Liburnians. The autosomal results of R3745 make his ancestry part of the ancestry of Iron Age Croatia as determined by the examination of samples from the 6th century BCE many of whom belong to the J2B L283 haplogroup. The Y-DNA of R3745 belongs to haplogroup EV13, a major paleovolcanic haplogroup which peaks in Albanians, about one-third of whom are EV13. In several subgroups of Albanians, it peaks even higher. In Malsor and Cham Albanians, and some areas in Kosovo, EV13 reaches close to 40%. Besides Albanians, the second ethnic group to have high EV13 are Montenegrins, with about 25% of Montenegrin males being EV13. The particular branching of R3745 is EY30977. This EV13 clade formed around 2700 BCE 
and began to multiply and diversify around 2300 BCE, according to the data of the research database WIFL. The exact EY30977 descendant branch to which R3745 belonged is not known, and today's descendants of this branch are found in many regions. In the Western Balkans, the lineage is still present 2000 years later. Two old tribes belong to EY30977 as the Zadar individual. They are the Albanian Dushmanifis of northern Albania, EY173058, and the Vasiljevici planet of southeastern Montenegro, EY126722. In the same sublineage of the Dushmani, an Arboresh is found, and in the Vasiljevici branch there is also a Bosnian Serb. The Dushmani and the Vasiljevici are descendants of EY37092, who lived circa 2300 BCE. All these groups and individuals and the sub-adult from the 1st to 2nd century Yadar are all descendants of the same man who lived in circa 2700 BCE. In the Roman era, Dalmatia and the Balkans were colonized by the Romans, but the native people of the Balkans and their lineages survived and eventually made their comeback. This lineage is one of them. In our next video, we'll cover a sample from somewhere more to the south of Dalmatia, this time from Roman Doclia in modern Montenegro. Hope you enjoyed the first video of the series and found it informative. In that case, please leave us your thoughts in the comment section, like, and subscribe. This is our first video about ancient DNA studies, and we'll be linking resources which helped us a lot in the preparation of the video. Thanks again for watching. See you all next time.